Broadcasting live from the School of Athens, this is Europe and the People Without History, everyone's favorite AP World History Review resource. Today, with Mr. Olson, we will be talking about the third installment of Period 2, the Classical Era. So, we're going to be discussing Key Concept 2.3. Key Concept 2.3, as dictated by the College Board, says, With the organization of large-scale empires, trans-regional trade intensified, leading to the creation of extensive networks of commercial and cultural exchange. Go ahead and pause me. Put that into your own words now. And I'm back! Hopefully you had something like, as empires grew, so did trade, which led to cultural diffusion. Yay! So we're talking trade here. The three big ideas in the classical period. Empire building and falling. Religious expansion. Trade. Those are the three big things. If you can get that down, you are going to conquer this. Like Alexander the Great. Hopefully only you last longer than he did. Okay, so key concept 2.3, Roman numeral 1. Land and water routes become the basis for interregional trade, communication, and exchange networks in the Eastern Hemisphere. We're talking about trade not focused in Europe. Can you believe that? Not focused in Europe. How could, how dare somebody do something and not focus on Europe? Okay, anyways. Uh, so the major classical trade routes... Uh, the most important one, of course, is the Silk Road, pictured uh, in the bottom right-hand corner, mostly in red, but also in blue, too. It's important to remember that all of these trade uh, routes are networks, not one road. Um, so the Silk Roads went between uh, Rome and China and were carrying mostly luxury goods like silk and horses and things that, that people of affluence wanted. There were still some everyday things that, that went al along the Silk Road, um, but for the most part, it was driven by the Roman desire for silk. They liked it a lot. Uh, a more effective and more influential trade route system uh, was were the Indian Ocean Sea Roads, so, so the, um, which is basically shown in blue, there. Um, there were also trade routes within the Mediterranean, and there were also trade routes in, in uh, the northern part of Av Africa that went from Sub-Sahara to nor North Africa uh, uh, throughout through the desert. I'm not going to talk about them here. They're, they're going to be the, the topic of a video later on. Okay, so what influences trade? Well, geography and climate certainly influence trade. Why would the Silk Road not go straight through here? Well, there's a desert. Why would it not go straight through here? Well, there's mountains. So you, you have to take into account the hazards that uh, the world pr provides to us. Also, the types of goods traded, whether they're luxury items or non-luxury items, that's going to influence how trade is done and how effective it is. And then by, finally, who is trading also plays a big, big role, uh, especially later on in the course. Okay, key concept 2.3, Roman numeral 2. New technologies facilitated long-distance communication and exchange. So, key concept 2.3, uh, Roman nu numeral 2, is focused on how uh, things facilitated this trade over long periods. So, there's a map of the Indian Ocean trade net networks. Um, I'm going to start by talking about land ones, and then, then we'll get to those. So, uh, new technologies made traveling across land more efficient. Okay, there were stirrups that allowed people who were riding animals to put their feet in something that allowed for more successful command of these animals. There were stirrups for camels, stirrups for horses, stirrups. In addition, they start to use the idea of a caravan, but the improvement of wheeled vehicles over time allowed them to carry more stuff over land. Make no mistake about it, Traveling by boat is still better than traveling by camel, even though camels are the best animal. Okay, anyways, so let's talk about that Indian Ocean trade net network. So traveling in water at this time is a much more efficient way to move your goods because boats can carry more stuff, and there are these awesome things called the monsoon winds that blow in the Indian Ocean very regularly, so you can plan your trip down to the week, sometimes even the day. It makes, more, it makes trade much more reliable than traveling through desert and sands on camels that might drop dead. Uh, so if trade is more reliable, it's also cheaper. Things that allowed for this to take off uh, was the, the astrolabe, which is a na navigational tour, tool that helps uh, ships know where they're going. It's sort of the uh, predecessor to the magnetic compass. And also the stern post rudder made ships more efficient. Um, there, there were also uh, new ships that, that were instituted with triangular sails uh, that were used by both the Indians and the Chinese that uh, made shipping more efficient as well. But 
Anyways, it's important to note that technological advancement is going to make, make trade more efficient and therefore more people are going to have more, more goods. One last word about the Indian Ocean trade. Um, Indian Ocean trade traded a much more diverse set of goods and a lot more everyday items because you can tr trade in bulk because a lot more stuff can be uh, moved via boat. And since you have three continents, Africa, a well, I guess two continents, but three regions, Africa, South Asia, and Southeast Asia trading in abundance, e East Asia too. You know what? We'll just say all the places on the map were involved. Um, since they're trading in abundance, you get a very diverse set of goods, not just silk for horses. So uh, that also makes for more efficient trade. You have more bustling mar marketplace. And key concept 2.3 Roman num numeral 3 says, alongside the trade in goods, the exchange of people, technology, religious and cultural beliefs, food, and disease pathogens developed across extensive networks of communication and trade. So um, we see the spread of crops throughout these areas change the way pe pe people live. So for example, as rice moves from China to India, it's going to change the way Indians do agriculture because they're going to adopt this practice. Um, also, as crops move in the Americas, it's going to change the way they do their practices. One of the most important ways that uh, agriculture change as a result of new goods is the need for more water. Some crops require more water than others, which forces various empires to institute irrigation system. So the moche in South, South America... Um, had extensive irrigation systems because they lived in the Andes Mountains. They needed uh, to water their crops, and water was not reliable. In addition, the Persians, who live in the sandy Middle East, uh, need to build extensive irrigation systems called kanats. So you, you, you see the movement of goods change the way people live. In addition, the Maya instituted a slash-and-burn agricultural method, which... Uh, cut down all the trees, burnt them to put um, new, new nutrients back into the soil. You also see them build terraced fields on, on the sides of mountains because there's so much water in the rainforest that they have to control the water in some way, shape, or form. So as uh, crops move, as goods move, it's going to change the way people do everyday life. You also see the spread of disease. The bubonic plague enters China. Smallpox and measles enter Rome. Uh, bubonic plague is going to be uh, is obviously going to be a big player in period three of this course, but uh, it, it gets its origins here in the classical era with the emergence of uh, the silk, silk roads coming in and out of China. You also see the spread of religion, um, most notably when Buddhism enters onto the Silk Road, it starts to uh, move wildly into China, somewhat west but mostly east. Um, and then as you see this movement of religions, you you, you start to see. Uh, the phenomenon of syn syncretism, which is the religion changing and taking on um, characteristics of where it moves to. So when Buddhism moves to chi China, it becomes more Chinese, less Indian. So you start to see this, this cultural blending, if you will, over time as religion spread. Anyways, that is trade in the classical era. This is your Buddha signing off.